Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, we praise your, oh, we praise your holy name, oh God. Lord, you alone are worthy to be praised. Lord, we come tonight, Lord. Lord, we ask, Lord, that you would open up our minds and our hearts, Lord. Give us understanding, Lord. Speak to us, God. Minister to us through your word, oh God. Lord, let us become dreamers like Daniel, Daniel the dreamer, who had many dreams and many interpretations of the dream. Lord, we ask, Lord, that you would help us, Lord, study Daniel tonight. Lord, let us take some things from the life of Daniel, Lord, and the things that he uh, was about and the things that he did in his life. Lord, as you used him, Lord, that you revealed things to him. And Lord, we ask, Lord, that you would help us learn what it was that he did that was uh, made him available to be used by you in jesus name we pray hallelujah glory to god amen wednesday night we're going to be studying uh daniel the dreamer uh another dreamer in the bible and we want to find out some things about daniel daniel served three different kings and they were not kings uh that were uh from jerusalem these were uh kings that had taken his nation captive so he actually had a a previous king and we're going to talk about that in the the first verse of the chapter where they came from jerusalem and they were taken in captivity by the babylonians or by the king nebuchadnezzar but before we get into that tonight we want to look at a little bit of a timeline and try to get a little bit of perspective of what's going on the timeline for daniel is daniel uh was a young man. He grew up in Jerusalem. Uh, he was from uh, the tribe of Judah. He was taken cap- captive by the Babylonians in 605, 605 B.C., 605 years before Christ came. And Nebuchadnezzar uh, was the king that invaded Jerusalem and attacked Jerusalem and took them captive. Uh, we find that his son took over later, and then Darius took over uh, 539 years before Christ, which was uh, 66 years um, after um, the, the uh, first uh, king, Nebuchadnezzar. But we see that there was a dream that Nebuchadnezzar had, and it did not come to pass And Babylon was not destroyed until 125 years after the first dream that Daniel had about Nebuchadnezzar and his kingdom. And we're going to be looking at that today. Also, it was 444 years before Christ that Nehemiah had to go back and rebuild the temple that was uh, destroyed in Jerusalem. And we know that I was reading this and I was studying this and I got curious about the timeline And so this timeline was 600 uh, and five years before Christ. Uh, Leviticus, I got interested because I knew that there was a dietary law that was given uh, after the original dietary law. And in Leviticus, which was about a thousand years uh, before uh, Nehemiah, uh, we find that uh, God allowed them to eat a different... um, portion of foods and so i thought that was pretty interesting because when we read daniel you would think that he is part of the original dietary law because when he wanted to be tested he went to the uh the vegetables he went to the herbs and plants instead of uh the uh leviticus diet which uh, allowed certain meats and so uh, we're going to look at that tonight a little bit thought it was kind of interesting that daniel went to the original dietary law to be tested uh, when he said test us for 10 days with vegetables and so uh, we're going to look at that tonight Uh, we we want to get everybody involved because iron sharpens iron and i think that is uh, appropriate for our wednesday nights that we sharpen sharpen each other by studying and bringing out things that we saw or what we studied or or the way that we interpret things or way that we understand things uh, we also want to look at a few different things that, um, but we'll get into this later. So let me just get into the scriptures tonight. Heavenly Father, we pray right now that you open up our understanding. Give us revelation, Lord, of your word 
as we walk through this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us, whether it's live or whether it's in person or that it's later on in your life. It's been recorded and you come back to it later. So chapter 1 and verse 1, Jerusalem taken by the Babylonians. In the third year of the rule of Judah's king, uh, Jericham, Babylon's king Nebuchadnezzar came to Jerusalem and attacked it and besieged it, uh, took them captive. The Lord handed the Lord handed Judah's king over to Nebuchadnezzar, along with some of the equipment from God's house or instruments or uh, vessels from God's house. Um, Nebuchadnezzar took these to Sinar and to his own temple or his God's temple that he worshiped putting them in his treasury and so we find here that uh, Daniel is taken captive Uh, we find that the three Hebrew boys that are with Daniel are taken captive and then there is a period where the king is now going to train them to serve uh, the royal uh, the royalty of his palace and so in verse 3, Nebuchadnezzar instructed his highest official, Ashpenza, to choose royal descendants and members of the ruling class from the Israelites. Good-looking young men, without defects, skilled, and in, in, uh, they have all wisdom, processing knowledge. Uh, they have the ability to learn, the capability to serve the king's palace. And so... Uh, the gentleman that he chose, the high official, Ash, I'm just going to call him Ash, was to teach them the Galdean language and the Galdean literature. And so the king assigned these young men daily allotments from his own food, from his royal wine. And the gentleman in charge, the high officer, Ash, was to teach them for three years so that at the end of that time, the end of the three years, they could serve before the king. And so they had to be trained. They had to be prepared. Isn't that interesting? A worldly king would invest three years into these men who uh, came from Israel, and he was going to invest in them so that they could serve after three years. Among these three young men, we know it's the Daniel and the three Hebrew boys. Anybody want to say their name? Anybody got a mic? Somebody help me out here. Hallelujah. There you go, sister. I won't get you guys involved. We say those names because I'll mess them all up. Anybody else? She was saying them, yeah. Well, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I want to make sure we say them right. Hananiah, Mishael, Azariah. And Azariah. Okay. But the chief official gave them new names. Here we go. This is a test. He named Daniel. What did he name Daniel? Somebody hand the mic to somebody that. Belteshazzar. English teacher, come on. (laughs) Belteshazzar. Belteshazzar. Shazar. Shazar. All right. And? Hananiah of Shadrach, Mishael of Meshach, Azariah of Abednego. All right. And so the test comes. Daniel decided that he would would not pollute himself with the king's rations or the royal wine, and he appealed to the chief official in hopes that he wouldn't have to do so. Now, God had established faithfully loyalty between Daniel and the chief official. And so this chief official uh, said to Daniel, I'm afraid of my master, the king, who mandated what you would eat and what you would drink. What will happen if he sees your faces looking thinner than the other young men and the other men in your group? The king will have my head because of you. So Daniel spoke to the guard whom the chief official had appointed over Daniel and the three Hebrew boys, why not test your servants for 10 days? You could give us a diet of vegetables to eat and water to drink. Now, some translations say that 
it's, um, it's more than just vegetables. It would be the, the nuts and the grains and the fruits and vegetables. Um, and so uh, I think one translation says pulse, which is the vegetarian uh, diet. And so anyway, he, he refers to, and I thought it was interesting that he referred back to vegetables and water when it's not really the dietary law of the time because the dietary law of the time was, was established in Leviticus and it did offer uh, certain kinds of meats to eat, but he went back to the original diet plan. And so he wants to eat vegetables and eat and drink water, then compare our appearance to other appearances of other young men that eat the king's food. Then deal with your servants according to how you see or what you see. The guard decided to go along with their plan and tested them for 10 days. 10 days. And the, at the end of 10 days, they looked better and healthier than all the young men who were eating the king's food. So the guard kept taking away their rations and their wine they were supposed to drink and gave them vegetables instead. And God gave knowledge, mastery of all literature and wisdom to these four men. Daniel himself gained understanding of every type of vision and dream. And so he became someone gifted because not just because of the diet, but because he was dedicated. He was going to do what God asked him to do. And I know everybody's getting quiet because he's, oh, we're going into the Daniels fast. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. But no, my point is that, that Daniel, he, he was not afraid of the king to be obedient to God, to serve God, to do what God wanted him to do. And, and I think that we can learn from this that, that we should not be afraid of any king. He went through three kings during his, his time that were kings of the enemy. And yet, God elevated him each time because he was dedicated to God and he stood fast and to listen to God and not what the king wanted him to do. And so, but he was a good servant. He was a good man. He prayed three times a day. I believe that we can learn from Daniel. We all should be praying three times a day. I believe that we all can do that. It doesn't say he prayed, you know, two or three hours three times a day. It says that he prayed three times a day. And, and I think that we all can find the time to get up and pray. We can pray in the middle of the day, and we can pray before we go to bed. I, think, I don't think that's very complicated. I think that's something that we should be able to do. How would you want to go through a day without knowing what God is saying and what God is telling you? And why would you not want to speak to God three times a day? And Sister Edna. I may not pray a long time, but I don't go a long time without praying. Right. Amen. So, you know, you can get three, three times in easy. As soon as you get into the habit, you make it a habit. And I think that one thing that we ought to get out of this is Daniel was dedicated steadfast. He was able to go through three different kings who were not good people. And he was able to serve them and find favor with them and still serve God and obey God because he fasted, he prayed, and he was obedient to God's word. No matter how little the detail was, he was going to follow God's rule and so and so we find that he became a dreamer and he was able to have visions and see visions and tell other people what their visions are and then interpret what he saw and so it's a great gift and a lot of people say well Daniel's the one that saw the the the, the vision about you know the the big man the big statue that's not the only dream he had. That's not the only dream that he was able to interpret. He had interpreted many dreams. That was not just, it was not just one. Now, the one that he first was used in was the dream about the statue and the, the gold head and the silver uh, breast and the, you know, the brass and the iron and 
the clay and all this, and we'll talk about that in a moment. But we ought to see here that how, how did he become a dreamer? How did he become someone that was elevated and was able to be used by God? It all started with obedience, standing on God's promises, standing on God's prophecies, and he was dedicated in his heart, in his mind, that he wasn't going to defile his body, that he was going to, listen, and, and, and it wasn't that he thought he was going to live a long time, and, it was, and he was a health nut, he was saying, no, I don't know how long I'm going to live, but I'm going to obey God while I'm living. They may cut my head off, so eating a healthy diet is, is not going to bring me a lot of time on this earth, but the fact that I'm obeying God, yes. right, is what's important. Whether they cut my head off tomorrow or God spares me and lets me live a long time and uses me, and he did. God allowed him to be used for many years. We see that the dream did not even come to pass for 125 years. It, their kingdom didn't actually fall until 480 years before Christ. And so it was about 125 years before it actually fell. And so when you see things, we automatically think, well, it's going to happen right now. Everything's going to happen. But that's not always the way it works. God might show you something, but it might be a long way down the road. And so what we got to do is we, we, he gives us the dream to hold on, right? It's going to happen God gives us a dream so that we can stay focused on what the dream was so that we can live a good, holy life and that we're going to be pleasing to God. No matter what happens or the results, we got to do what God says. And so one of the things that I got out of Daniel, even in the smallest little thing, he was going to obey God. Even in the diet, in the prayer, in obeying God's word, even if it, his life was going to be in danger, he was going to what? Serve God, no matter what. And I think we've got to get that mindset. We've got to get, we're serving God no matter what, no matter who, who is in charge, we're going to obey God. All right, so let's go into verse 18, the result of the training. When the time came to review the young men, as the king had ordered, the chief official brought them before Nebuchadnezzar. This didn't just happen overnight. We read it, and it sounds like it just happened overnight. Right. No, no, no. But this was a three-year journey. And sometimes we get so impatient on God that, that we forget what it is that God showed us or what God told us, and, and we're so easily, so quickly removed from what God wants to do because we get impatient or we forget about what God said and, and and we don't stick to the plan that God gives us and we give up so easily and, and so we need to learn to be like Daniel this and when we read the Bible understand it's not an overnight thing it's a period of three years before we get to this verse 18 it's three years of training it's three years of staying on that diet it's three years of finding favor with this man to let him stay on this diet. It's three years of learning something new that they did not know. They, they had to learn the Babylonian language and their ways of doing things. Brother Travis, come on up. Where's the mic? That's right. I want to throw one thing. I don't know if you come up. Okay. Um, listening to that, that means that Melzar, the God, who the prince of the eunuch appointed over him, the God, the word said that he had to have had found favor in Daniel because he was appointed by the prince of the eunuch to give them this food from the king. Yeah. So that means he, I don't know what he did with it, but he was ordered with, with his head on the line to give these people this diet so that they can be prepared to come before the king. So right. whatever the favor was that he found, he must have saw something in Daniel right. and the three boys because the, his life was on the line. So right. whatever he did with the food he was supposed to, he, he chose not to right. and allow these boys to take what, what they decided was best. So he was risking his life. Yeah. 
that's Absolutely. that's pretty interesting. I know you, we do, that doesn't necessarily is not highlighted here, but yeah. that dude put his life on the line Absolutely. to be able to allow Daniel and his, and his friends to eat something other than what he was commanded to eat. Amen. So that's pretty serious. That that is pretty serious, and that's what we got to believe. Okay, you know whatever happens to us, whoever God allows to come in our life, they may not be of us, but God will send somebody that will find that we'll have favor with. And that's exactly what he was. He, he found favor in this man because God allowed him to find favor. You know, it, it's a God thing. And this is where it all comes back to faith in God. Don't, don't look at the obstacles. Don't look at the situation. This man, he's, he, he don't want to lose his head. He was worried about losing his head. But when God, when we have faith in God and trust in God, God makes a way even when it seems impossible. This person's not going to let me do whatever I want to do. But you know what? If God's in control and you're faithful to God, God will what? Either change their heart or he'll remove them and put somebody else in that will have the heart of God. And will and they may not serve God. This is very important, church. They may not serve God, but God can use them anyway. And we got to believe that, and we have to understand that. All right. Anybody else got anything before we move on that you want to throw in? Nothing. Get the mic. Come on up. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> Just some of the things that stand out to me about Daniel is that when when he was taken captive, he was a teenager, maybe approximately 15 years old or so, and he chose the, the one of the words that sticks out to me is integrity. Um, integrity is doing what is right, no matter the situation, no matter who's around or if no one's around. It's choosing to do what is right and no one would have blamed him if he had not insisted on abiding by something at, like the dietary law no one would have blamed him he was taken captive but he decided not to defile himself um, but it, it to me he was developing that at that time and then the lord he saw the Lord give them favor, but then years, years, years later, he was an old man, and and the decree went out that nobody can pray, but he'd already developed a life of integrity. He'd already developed a life of consistency. You know, he had already developed this prayer life, like what you were saying, Pastor, morning, noon, night. He'd already... This was an everyday thing. He wasn't getting fanfare. He wasn't getting recognition for every day choosing to do what was right. He just quietly did what was right. So when these decrees came, he just continued to do what he'd always done. And that, to me, that just really sticks out because as Christians, um, we can relate in some ways he was in a time of change you know he had, was taken captive but then even while he was captive the change of kingship and he didn't lose his mind he didn't go all you know radical he just simply quietly continued to do what he had always done before the Lord and the Lord gave him favor in in all these situations even when people set traps for him they intentionally tried to get him um, thrown into the lion's den and he was thrown into the lion's den however the lord stood by him and gave him favor with each king that he served um, he never did go back to jerusalem he stayed um, in babylon uh, and so he never did get to go back with those that did go back after the captivity. And but I think that's really important in these days that we're living. We're entering into the, the last days. You know, if there's a one world government, right, we can't all freak out and just go nuts because, you know, 
this thing's happening. We still serve the same God, the same God that led us led his people through the desert in the middle of the snakes and without water, without food, and, and no scorpions. It's the same God. It's the same God it, that was for Daniel. And what we have to learn, the word she said, integrity, obedience. We, we, we've got to get this thing in our mind that no matter what's going on around us, we're going to have the same, same plan Every day, I'm talking to God, I'm praying to God, I'm going to fast, I'm going to take care of the temple of the Holy Ghost. Listen, just because I want to take care of the temple of the Holy Ghost doesn't mean I think I'm going to live forever. And it doesn't mean that somebody can't kill me tomorrow. But, but that's not why you're doing it. You're doing it because you're a temple of the Holy Ghost. And you want to be able to take care of the temple of the Holy Ghost so that you can serve God the way that God wants you to see. And the main thing that I get out of it, he became a dreamer because he had integrity. He prayed. He fasted. He took care of himself. He had his mind made up. So God said, I can use this person, and I can give him dreams, and I can let him interpret other people's dreams. I can let him see the king's dream and tell the king what he dreamt and tell him what it means. And he found favor because he found favor with God. Uh, does everybody get that? If you find favor with God, God has the power and the ability to have you find favor with other people. This Nebuchadnezzar was an evil man. He was going to kill everybody who could not read his dream. In other words, the whole world would have been destroyed because nobody could read it except for Daniel. So it would have been him and Daniel. He was that evil. He was willing to kill everybody because he was asking them to do something that is not normal. Read his dream. Tell him what his dream was. Not, not what it meant, but what it was, and then tell him what it meant. That was kind of uh, unrealistic, really. C come on up, brother. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, I want everybody to see who's talking. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Um, this ain't where I was going, but since you brought it up, um, concerning that dream, when we get to it in chapter 2, Nebuchadnezzar said that the dream had left him because his wise men, we're getting ahead of us, but the wise men came and he said, hey, I need y'all to tell me the dream and what it means. And if you do, you know, you'll be rewarded. If you don't, off with your head. And they're like, all right, well, tell us what the dream was and we'll tell you what it meant. He said, no, no, no. I don't remember what the dream was. And better yet, if I did, I know y'all got plenty of sense, so you'll probably use that against me and run game on me. So I don't even remember what it is. So the Lord, the, Daniel has such favor that the Lord told him what the king dreamt and the interpretation of it. So, but here's where you got to see it deeper. The king said that the dream troubled him, but he forgot. He said it left him, so he did not remember in detail what he dreamt, but he knew it was a terrible dream. So when Daniel it, um, told him what the dream was interpreted, the favor, the miracle that God performed in the dream, the vision for Daniel was to be able to explain to the king, I'm going to tell you what you dreamt that you say you forgot and tell you what it means. So understand then that this evil king had to accept that what Daniel was telling him was truly what it was and the interpretation of it. You see, if, if you're telling me, and I say, well, I forgot something, you say, well, brother, this is what it was. How do I know? I forgot. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Because I don't know. I know it was a terrible thing, but I honestly don't remember what it was. So Daniel told him exactly what it was and what it meant. So that's, a, that's an amazing thing that the Lord did because the king had to, okay, well, that, I guess that sounds about right. So, yeah, that must be it. You understand? Because he didn't know the king forgot. The king said he forgot. So he had to some kind of way the Lord had to move on his heart or, or find favor for him to accept that, okay, I, that, that, I guess that's true what you tell him and then the interpretation of it. That's, that's very deep there. Yeah, yeah. Amen. And that's, that's, that's the kind of things that the Lord has the power and the will to do for his people if and when we, our minds are conditioned, if and when we obey the scriptures, if and when we apply the scriptures to our lives, he may just, he may do that for us. Yeah. I got more. We'll, we'll get to that later. Yeah. Oh, that's later. Hold on. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 
But not only that, later we read that Nebuchadnezzar was saying that he had done this before and they lied to him. Like he would tell them what he dreamt and then they would lie. Like they'd make something up because they would go off of what he said. So he was already, he already caught on to their little tricks, their little game, right, that they were doing. And so he said, no, you're going to tell me. And not only that, the Lord wouldn't let me remember, so I can tell you. But then when I hear it, God's going to open up my understanding again, and I'm going to say, that was it. Hallelujah. Amen. Good, good, good stuff. All right. Uh, did, did you get everything out, or did I cut you off? Hallelujah. Okay. Amen. The result of the training. All right. Did we go over this? Where am I at? Am I in chapter 2 yet? I'm on 18. And when the time came to review the young men as the king had ordered, the chief official brought them before King Nebuchadnezzar. When the king spoke with them, he found no one as good as Daniel and the three Hebrew boys. Amen. Nobody as good as those four young men that did what? Obeyed the Lord. And God opened up the door and allowed them to. To uh, have their diet that uh, they wanted to eat so that they could uh, increase in knowledge. And so they took their place in the king's service. And whenever the king consulted them about any aspect of wisdom and understanding, he found them head and shoulders after three years of training, head and shoulders above all the dream interpreters and enchanters in his kingdom. And Daniel stayed in the king's service until the first year of King Cyrus. In other words, he served multiple kings, right? And so let's go to chapter 2. And this is where we see the vision, the dream that Brother Trelvis was talking about. In the second year of Nebuchadnezzar's rule, he had many dreams, he had many dreams. See, he had already had dreams, and they, he already went before them, and they, they, you know, he figured out that they were lying or they were cheating or they were just coming up with stuff. And the dreams made him anxious, but he kept sleeping. The king summoned the dream interpreters, enchanters, all of his uh, uh, divine workers to explain his dreams to him. They came and they stood before the king. Then the king said to them, I had a dream. And I'm anxious to know its meaning. And the Galileans answered the king in Arabic. Long live the king. Tell your servants the dream and we will explain its meaning. And the king answered and he said, my decision is final. If you can't tell me the dream and its meaning, you will be torn limb from limb, and your houses will be turned into trash dumps. But if you can do, if you can explain the dream and the meaning of the dream, you'll receive uh, generous gifts and glorious honor from me. So explain to me the dream and what the dream means. They answered him again, the king must tell us, the servants, what dream you had. And the king replied, no, I definitely, definitely know you are stalling for time because you, uh, you see that my decision is final and that if you can't tell me the dream, the, your fate is certain. You've conspired to make false and lying speeches before. See, they've already done this. Until the situation changes. Tell me the dream now. Then I'll know that you can explain its meaning to me. And so no one on earth, they said, can do what the king is asking. No king or ruler, no matter how great, has ever asked such a hard thing from his dreamers and interpreters and enchanters. What the king is asking is impossible. No one could declare the dream to the king but the gods who don't even live among us humans. At this, the king exploded in fury and rage and ordered that all Babylonians will be wiped out. 
So the command went out. He was going to kill everybody. Daniel and his friends also were to be hunted down, and they also were to be killed as well as everybody else. That's some serious stuff. Oh, they're gods. They're, they're you know, they're, they're sun god. They're uh, moon god. They're star gods. They're all these other gods that they worship. No humans, right. Yeah, because they, they, they had the sun gods, they had the star gods, they had the moon gods, they had the uh, water gods. I mean, they had all kinds of gods. Yeah, but, but they had a lot of suspicious things. Yeah, you know, it's, they, they were controlled by the anti-spirit. So they, you know, they were controlled by the, the devil, you know. They're playing with their minds. So they worship idols. They worship other things. And so, so they're saying only these guys, and those guys couldn't explain it either because they're not even real. They're not even really gods. So anyway, where are we at? Verse 14. So God now is going to reveal the mystery. But, but see how evil he was, Brother Bobby? He was going to kill everybody if nobody could tell him what the dream was and what it meant. That's, that's pretty bad. He's going, to kill, he's going to kill all of his people. And we think we have it tough. It may get tough. God reveals the mystery. Then Daniel, with wisdom and sound judgment, responded to, how do you say that? Arioch, the king's chief executor who had gone out to kill all the Babylonians. He said to the king or this officer, why is the king's command so unreasonable? And Daniel said, explain to me the situation. Daniel went and asked the king to give him some time so that he could explain the dream's meaning to him. Then Daniel went to the house and he explained the situation to his friends the other Hebrew boys, so that they would ask the God of heaven for help about this mystery in hopes that Daniel and his friends wouldn't die with the rest of the Babylonians. Then, in a vision by night, the mystery was revealed to Daniel. Daniel praised the God of heaven. God's name be praised from the age to the eternal age. Wisdom and might are his. God is the one who changes times and eras, who dethrones one king and establishes another king, who grants wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those with insight. God is the one. Everybody say, God is the one. We have to understand it's not about a king. It's not about power. Listen, the only one that has total control over everything is God Almighty. There is only one God. He is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. He is the Almighty God. He is the, listen, he is the same yesterday. He's the same today, and he'll be the same tomorrow. We must put our faith in him, our trust in him, and him alone. I don't care what kingdom rises up. I don't care who rises up. I don't care how evil they are. I don't care what their demands are. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We've got to have our minds made up to have integrity and to have faith in God and trust in God no matter what. And we have to believe that God will show us favor and he will what? He will use other people that don't even serve God to help us survive if God wants us to survive. If God doesn't want you to survive, you're not going to survive anyway. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Well, we ran one battery down. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. And so, as we see here, God is the one who uncovers. Everybody say that again. God is the one who uncovers. What lies deeply hidden, he knows what hides in the darkness. 
Jesus Christ is the light. Light lives with him. Hallelujah. He will shine the light on darkness, folks. We wrestle not with flesh and blood but against powers and principalities and rulers and high, listen in high dark places wicked places but God is going to shed the light the same God that was with Daniel is the same God that is eternal that is forever it's the same God that we serve it's the same God that took his people out of Egypt into the wilderness with no water and food and, the, and they were among the vipers and the scorpions and yet they, what? They survived. Somebody say amen. amen. So we have to trust God. Don't trust anybody other than God. That's what I say. Don't trust anybody other than God. I acknowledge and praise you, my Father's God, You've given me wisdom and might, and now you've made known to me, Daniel, what we ask of you. You've made known to us the king's demand. And here we go in verse 24. Anybody want to say anything before we go on to the next? All right. Daniel recounts the dream. And so here we have this young man who is now being used by God for a way to save not only his people, but all the people, even the king's people. And so Daniel went, and he went to Arioch, and the man the king had appointed to wipe out all Babylonians, Daniel said to him, don't wipe out the Babylonians. Do not wipe everyone out yet. Bring me before the king, and I will explain the dream and the meaning to him. Wasting no time, he took him to the king, telling him, I have found someone from the Ju uh, Judean exiles who will tell the dream's meaning to the king. And in reply, the king said to Daniel, whose name was what? Belteshazzar. Hallelujah. Can you really tell me the dream that I saw as well as its meaning? And Daniel answered the king, and he answered the king, and he uh, answered the enchanters and the interpreters that the king was with the king, and, and what they cannot explain, uh, the mystery. Uh, he says, but here I am, and I serve a God, but there is a God in heaven who can reveal all mysteries, who has shown King Nebuchadnezzar what will happen in the days to come. Now, I want to stop and, and just, I want to go over this again. In the days to come, we think, okay, it's going to happen tomorrow. It's going to happen next week. It's going to happen maybe in, in a few years. But this did not happen for 125 years. But he said in the upcoming days, this is what's going to happen. Now, this was your dream. And Brother Travis, he tells him the dream. This was the vision in your head as you laid in bed. Hallelujah. As you lay in bed, your majesty, your thoughts turn to what will happen in the future. The revealer of mysteries has revealed to you what will happen. Now, this mystery was revealed to me not because I have more wisdom than any other living person. You know why? Because you're the one that has been faithful. You're the one that has been obedient. You're the one that has obeyed God. You've got your mind made up. You're going to fast. You're going to pray. You're going to do what God says. You've got your mind made up who you're serving. That's why God can speak to Daniel. The revealer of mysteries has revealed to you what will happen. Now this mystery was revealed to me not because I have more wisdom than any other person, but so that the dream's meaning might be made known to the king. And so that you might know that the thoughts that were in your mind, your majesty, you are looking and there is rising before you one single massive statue. This statue was huge, shining with dazzling lights, and it was awesome to see. The statue's head was made of pure gold. Its chest, was, its chest and arms were made of silver. And in the abdomen and hips area was bronze. And the legs were of iron. 
and, and its feet were mixed with iron and clay. You observed this until a stone was cut, not made by hands, and it was smashed, and it smashed the statue's feet of iron and clay and shattered them. And we can just stop right there and we can say, I know the end of the story. I know what's going to happen. I know who wins. I know that Jesus is the rock. I know that Jesus is going to smash and crush, hallelujah, every empire, every evil, every evil king, hallelujah, and he's going to get victory. And so we already know the end of the story. And so thank God we have this dream and we know what's going to happen. But we ought to have confidence in that. And we ought to have the same mindset as Daniel. No matter what's going to happen around me, I know the end of the story. I know who wins. And if I'll just stay focused and do what I'm supposed to do, hey, I'll be, listen, I'll be on the winning side. And so it shattered them. And then all the parts shattered simultaneously uh, all at once. Iron, clay, bronze, silver, and gold. They became like chaff uh, left in the summer threshing floors. The wind lifted them away until no trace of them remained. But the stone that smashed the statue became a mighty mountain. And it filled the entire earth. Hallelujah. I wish somebody would get excited about the end of the story. Daniel is showing us the end of the story. They're going to be crushed. Hallelujah. They're going to go away. And the king of kings is going to be like a mountain. He's going to fill the entire earth. And everyone that has faith in him, everybody that trusts him, everybody that will follow him, everybody will put their total Listen, their total life in his hands will be with him in that day. Anybody want to add something? Brother Trelvis? Is this working again? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. That's news to me, Pastor. I, I, I didn't see that. Praise God. As you were reading <laughs> it, though, I, in the spirit, I said, oh, yeah, I, I get it. I see it. Um, Praise God. So talking about Daniel, the dreamer, and interpretations of dreams, and the king sent out a decree to kill all the wise men and, every, and Daniel and them too. And so I was like, well, darn, you ain't even, you ain't even ask them, you know, about the dream. You only ask your wise men. So how you went to sin to get them boys killed? They kill us for what? Oh, it was a dream he wanted. Well, y'all ain't gave us a chance. But anyway, so, so but it reminded me, <laughs> it remind me of um, there was another dreamer before that, Joseph. Amen. And the Bible say that uh, Potiphar's wife went to apprehend Joseph and say, we're going to do something. We ain't got no business. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to stay faithful to the Lord. I'm going to obey the Lord. Amen. And he was exalted. And he was exalted to a place where not only did he save his people, he saved all of the world. And here we go again. Later on again, you have, a, praise God, we have another experience where the Lord is showing his faithfulness is showing his commitment to his people that, stay, that were faithful to him. And not only did he save him and his friends, he saved all of the enemy's people as well. Amen. But that's not even the point. Here's the good thing. It's showing us that, let me see how, it's showing us that we have, I was talking to my partner earlier, we have the test, we have the answers to the test, we have the instructor of the class inside of us walking around with us. So we ought to be able to get this thing. So the point I want to make is we have Joseph. Then again, we have Daniel. And so then we have your granddad and we have your pastor. And then we have you. And now there's us. And so we were all once sinners, but somebody came. Somebody was obedient to the Lord. Somebody did what the Lord told them to do. And then they spoke into our lives. And so we took uh, notice of what the book said and so we're walking this out in our lives so now i'm here proclaiming to you all that this word is true it can work for you like it worked for me we have a pattern this is why i don't trust the physical book but i trust the heart of the book the god of the book his word is true his word is alive and so because of others that were obedient that walked this thing out they spoke into their lives and then they spoke into others lives and it's been passed down that's why we trust the book 
That's how I know it works. I'm not brainwashed. I have evidence that this thing works. And we are showing you in living color that this thing works. It's for everybody. That's what spoke to me, Pastor. This is for everybody. Amen. It's for everybody. Amen. But it, it's going to take some believers to keep it going. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's why we need to learn from Daniel and we need to fast and pray. And we need to pray three times a day. Find some place three times a day and pray. Pray for understanding. Pray for revelation. Pray for a dream. Pray for a vision. Pray for a soul. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Anybody else? Miguel, got anything you want to add? You don't? Okay, come on up. Yeah. Don't be shy. Amen. We want to hear it. Iron sharpens iron. Amen. And so everybody brings out a point that's really good that can help somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. Just something quick. Um, Daniel chapter 2, verse 17. Uh, this is the Bible. It says, Then Daniel went to his house and made the matter known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions, and told them to seek mercy from God of heaven concerning this mystery, that Daniel and his companions might not be destroyed with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Uh, what I see from here is that there's something, there's something powerful about a collective prayer, a collective group of people that would come together and pray. The Bible says that Daniel told his brothers that believe in God, that believe in the one true God, hey, come pray with me. We got to come together. We, 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 we got to seek God. We got to find the answer. Daniel was a dreamer, but the dream and the interpretation did not show up until they prayed to God. And right. It took prayer, a collective prayer, and there's something strong and powerful about collective prayer. Even in the New Testament, when Peter was in prison, it was a collective prayer. It was a people praying in, in, at the house. Uh, when Peter was finally released by the angel and was taken out, it took collective oh, prayer. Uh, and I just want to say that and, and let people know there's still power in prayer and there's something even stronger when people come together yes. and pray with one accord amen. and pray with one purpose hallelujah. with one dream and one vision yes. hallelujah amen hallelujah thank you for bringing that up brother miguel sunday we had a brother watching uh, on our youtube or facebook brother gary who is often watching often moved uh, always responds and he said Sunday really ministered to him and he was going to start fasting and he's going to start praying three times a day and he's going to go to the church and pray three times a day. Amen. And so, and I believe there's something there that thank God for the, the, the prayer line, but we've got to get back to praying in the church together. Amen. And I think that we're going to stop right here and we're going to do that right now. Uh, those that are watching, we want you to pray with us too. Amen. But those that are here, we want to pray together. There is power in prayer, power in praying together with your brothers and your sisters. Ha <laughs> ha.
God, hear our prayers, God. Hear the prayers of your people, God. Just like the day of Pentecost, when they were one accord in one place, praying together, Lord. And today, we have people in the same place. We have people who are connected in the Spirit. Lord, hear our prayers, Lord, as we pray unified prayers. Lord, let us see dreams and visions, God. Lord, give us direction, God. Give us favor, God. Teach us integrity. Teach us to love you and trust you in all things, always keeping our eyes focused on you. No matter what's going on, I'm going to pray in the morning. I'm going to pray in the middle of the day. I'm going to pray at night. I'm going to touch the throne of God three times a day, no matter what, no matter what, no matter what. Hallelujah. Oh, they can threaten me. They can cut my head off. They can do whatever they want to do. But I'm going to be committed to praying three times a day. I'm going to be fasting and I'm going to be praying. Come on, the church has got to catch back on fire. We got to catch back on fire. We can't, listen, the most important thing is serving God, coming together, assembling ourselves together, and fasting and praying and touching the throne of God and going out and doing what God asks us to do and finding favor and what? And saving people. We're not saving church people. We're saving the lost. No matter what we face, if it's a fiery furnace, if it's a, a den of lions, if it's a if it's a sword cutting our head off. It doesn't matter. I've got my mind made up. Hallelujah. I got my mind made up. I'm going to serve God. I'm going to do what God wants me to do. And he's the same God. Hallelujah. That took his people through the wilderness without water and food and the, amongst the scorpions and the snakes. And they were not harmed. They survived. And God prepared. Listen. God prepared a place for them. God protected them them until they got to the place that God wanted them to be. If God tells you to do something, he's going to protect you. You know what? We, we need to worry when we're actually not doing what God wants us to do. I would be more concerned about not doing what God wants me to do than doing what God wants me to do. I would rather be sent to Pakistan than to stay in Pompano if that's the will of God than to be outside of God's will. I use that example often, but what I'm saying is you better be in God's will. You think you're protecting yourself by staying home God's trying to say, get out. Follow me. Do what I've called you to do. Fear not. I didn't give you the spirit of fear. He's trying to shake us. And as new, listen, I knew as, as much as what I was saying Sunday, we would start seeing some response. And sure enough, all kinds of people came up positive from this virus. But we also kept trusting God and we prayed and good things are happening. So the devil tries to scare us, but we serve a God who can heal. And instead of destroying, God gets the glory. Hallelujah. 
We can't be afraid of the devil. We can't be afraid of scorpions and snakes and viruses and sicknesses and diseases. We can't be afraid of death. If we're ready to meet him, we ought not fear. We got to get like Daniel. I, I'm preaching to somebody, I, I, and I'm not trying to sound critical. I'm saying this is what we ought to be like. We ought to be like Daniel, who has got it purposed in his mind that he's going to do what God says, even if it cost him his life. But it didn't cost him his life because God used him, because God was preparing him. God was testing him to see if he would do what he was told to do. And because of his faith and his obedience in God and trust in God, he found favor over and over and over and over and over again with different people in the kingdom that was not his. He was in captivity for three or four kings, and yet he, he stayed faithful to God, and God showed him favor. And every time God showed him favor, there were some people that had to put it back to the test. Over and over and over again, people were jealous. People came against him, but he stayed steadfast in the promises and the prophecies of God, and he did everything that God told him to do. And I'm sure there was challenges in his life. I'm sure there was day-to-day -day trials and tribulations and, and things that, that you know, uh, he had to uh, be tested and tried. But he, st listen, he, he, he passed the test. That's what we got to do. Amen. So I believe that we all should, everybody watching, everybody that's going to watch later, Everybody, you, you need to dedicate in your heart and your mind, you're going to pray three times a day. Three times a day. I didn't say for how long, just three times a day. Find a place in the morning, a place at night, and somewhere during the daytime, find a few moments to pray to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Pray for wisdom. Pray for knowledge. Pray, pray for favor. Pray for others. Hallelujah. And I think that we all should at some point fast. I'm not going to tell you what to fast, how to fast. I, I like Gary. Gary texted me Sunday night. That, that message moved me, and I'm going to go. I'm going to start praying three times a day. I'm going to go to the church and pray. I'm going to fast more. I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to. Uh, I'm, I'm going to. I'm going to do this. I'm going to. I want to get closer to God. I want God to hear my prayers. I want to. I want to hear from God, and that's the way we all should be feeling. Now, whether you do a ten day fast, whether you do all vegetables, or some say that the Daniel's diet is vegetables, it's grain, it's nuts, um, grain, nuts, vegetable, fruits. So it could be that combination, just no meats. And, but if you don't want to do that and you want to go to the Levit Leviticus law, dietary law, and do, you know, the kosher uh, plan that was later, it's all clean meats and maybe just fast unclean meats, pork and shrimp and lobster and frogs and Y'all laughing. That's number four of the most uh, things that people eat that causes diseases. Frogs. Frogs. I don't know what part of the frog. Maybe it's the frog legs or the frog's head. I don't know. But number one is pork. Number two was shrimp. Number three was lobster. And four was frogs. And they cause diseases. That's why God said don't eat those things. So if you can't just do vegetables or if you just can't do the fruits and vegetables and nuts and grains, maybe, maybe you can at least do the Leviticus diet and just stay away from the pork and the, the shrimp and the lobsters and the frogs. Hallelujah. And the cockroaches. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God said, the fish that you can eat that is clean is the ones that have fins and scales. So there's plenty of fish, sea stuff that you can eat. Hallelujah. Say amen. 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 Let's stand one more time.
I don't know where to go with the gathering together for prayer, but we need to do it. I've got to figure out when everybody be a good time. Maybe Saturday mornings. Saturday mornings. Praise God. Oh, yeah, that's coming. Yeah. Amen. 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 I, I'm going to come up with a, a day and time, but I'm thinking maybe Saturday mornings or Saturday, not early Saturday, but sometimes Saturday. I know some people, I mean, I, I'm not going to be able to fit everybody's schedule. Not everybody's going to be able to. We'll come up with something, all right? Maybe we'll have three or four shifts and whatever shift you can make. Hallelujah. But I think that was a good point, Brother Miguel. We do need to get together and pray. Not just Sunday only and not just Wednesdays. There needs to be some other times that we're getting together and pray. Amen. God bless you. We love you guys for joining us. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah.